Dragonlord Placidus X. Having the lowest completion rate among the bosses with achievements tied to them, Placidus X is one of the strongest and most well-hidden bosses found in Elden Ring. As the leader of the Ancient Dragons and a wielder of Red Lightning, he presents many implications about Faramazula, the Outer Gods, and maybe even potential plot points for future DLC. If we want to make sense of the story of the Ancient Dragons, then their leader and the presumed true first Elden Lord may hold the answers. Spoilers ahead. Dragonlord Placidus X, whose name probably comes from the word Placidus, which is Latin for calm, can be found within crumbling Faramazula. The player reaches this place by defeating the fire giant and kindling the giant's flame. Somehow, the act of kindling the giant's flame, usually through the sacrifice of a maiden, seems to be what can transport us to Faramazula. Note that the only other NPCs that you can find here are Bernal, whose maiden threw herself into the fire, and Iron Fist Alexander, who probably had the remains of at least one maiden inside of himself that could be used as kindling after the battle with Radon, and he was last seen in the area that hides the giant's flame. There's a weapon that you can find earlier in the game called the Ruin's Greatsword, which reads, Originally rubble from a ruin which fell from the sky. This surviving fragment was honed into a weapon. The ruin it came from crumbled when struck by a meteorite. As such, this weapon harbors its destructive power. This ruin in the sky refers to Faramazula, and a meteorite was responsible for its crumbling state. The Greatsword's weapon art also utilizes gravity magic, which is commonly used by other creatures that arrived in the lands between through meteorite impacts. These include the Onyx and Alabaster Lords, the Falling Star Beasts, and Estelle. We're going to try to construct a timeline of events related to Faramazula and Placidus X, so let's keep this meteorite impact in mind for later. Throughout Faramazula, hostile beastmen can be found in varying states of decay. Their corpses can be found in ornate graves, built into the architecture, or, in some cases, being seemingly cannibalized by the other beastmen. The Azula Beastman Ashes, found on one of their graves, reads, Spirits of Beastmen from Doomed Faramazula, the slowly crumbling ruins in the skies. These ruins are said to be the remains of a giant mausoleum enshrining an ancient dragon, guarded by chosen beastmen who wield weapons clad in lightning. This item tells us that the beastmen guarded Faramazula and the ancient dragon it enshrines, pointing towards cooperation between the beastmen and Dragonlord Placidus X. Another item that refers to the Dragonlord is the Old Lord's Talisman, a legendary talisman depicting the ancient king whose seat lies at the heart of the storm beyond time. It is said that the ancient royal city of Faramazula has been slowly crumbling since time immemorial. Notice that this talisman features a dragon with four heads. The final item description we'll look at before the Placidus X fight is from any of the Draconic Shield talismans. The ancient dragons, who ruled in the prehistoric era before the Erd Tree, would protect their lord as a wall of living rock. The beastmen, the ancient dragons, and the mausoleum itself were all tools to protect the dragon lord. Yet, Placidus X is nowhere to be found. The only way to find him is to locate the heart of the storm beyond time. Along a hidden path at the bottom of Faramazula, you can find an unoccupied beast grave that you can lay inside of. Time begins to reverse, and you find yourself in the heart of the storm with the leader of the ancient dragons, frozen in time. Dragonlord Placidus X shows the ability to control red lightning, vanish into storm clouds, and breathe destructive, golden flames. He's already noticeably damaged, and he's missing two of the four heads depicted in the Old Lord's Talisman. If you can defeat him, you receive the Remembrance of the Dragonlord. The Dragonlord whose seat lies at the heart of the storm beyond time is said to have been Elden Lord in the age before the Erd Tree. Once his god was fled, the Lord continued to await its return. Placidus X has been hiding outside of time until the player finds and defeats him. The reign of the God of the Dragons was likely marked by this alternative version of the Elden Ring that is depicted in Malekith's boss arena in Faramazula, and could have ties to the primordial version of the Erd Tree, the Crucible. Whether this god was the Greater Will or some other unnamed outer god, their abandonment seems to be a key event in the downfall of Faramazula. But the question remains. What exactly? and did Placidus X's reign. Obviously, the absence of their god contributed to the ancient dragon's fall, but Placidus X shows signs of being defeated in a physical battle. 
A plausible reason for this could be the War of the Ancient Dragons. In the royal capital Langdell, the corpse of an enormous ancient dragon lies across a huge section of the city. We know this to be Gransax, whose invasion of Langdell triggered the war against the dragons. The Golden Order's version of the Elden Ring, hidden within the capital, was probably coveted by the dragons that ruled before the Age of the Erd Tree, giving reason for their invasion and the necessity for the Golden Order's retaliation. The Tree Sentinels and Godfrey's Crucible Knights were among the forces that attacked Faramazula. Godwin, the demigod offspring of Queen Merica and Lord Godfrey, defeats the dragon Fortisax during this war and would befriend his fallen foe. Placidisax's wounded body was likely caused by a battle against the Golden Order's forces. After this war, the forces of Langdell came to a conclusion, as stated by the Gravelstone Seal. The worship of the ancient dragons does not conflict with belief in the Erd Tree. After all, this seal and lightning itself are both imbued with gold. Fortisax's friendship with Godwin, the reverence that Langdell had for the power of the dragons, and the end of the war with Faramazula would give way to the capital's dragon cult being formed. Fortisax's sister, Lanciax, would serve as a priestess to this cult, and there's evidence that the cult was already being formed before Langdell's forces even returned to the capital. Also note that the dragon head in the dragon temple resembles Placidisax's unique head shape. Life goes on for the ancient dragons and Langdell. Temples for the worship of dragons arise in both Faramazula and the Lands Between, the Elder Dragon Grail would give birth to a new generation of dragons that, while feeble compared to the ancient dragons, are much more commonly found throughout the lands between. Dragons are still revered to this day, as shown by the practice of dragon communion and Godric's obsession with the true-born heritage of the dragons, but their age has long passed. Faramazula is perpetually crumbling, and it seems that the curse of Godwin's infection has somehow partially taken over. Now, it's likely anyone who travels to Faramazula arrives at a similar point in time. If we operate under the assumption that Malekith and Gurank are the same person, which you're free to agree or disagree with, Malekith's unique dialogue with the player if they have completed his quest, and the fact that he still exists in the player's world after the boss version of him has been killed, supports the idea that everyone arrives at the same point in Faramazula's disconnected timeline. However, Placidisax remains at the heart of the storm, forever awaiting the return of his god and the reign of the dragons. Now, as confusing as it may be, we can try our best to construct a timeline of these events. First, Faramazula exists outside of time and is partially built from the graves of the chosen beastmen that would act as its guardians. The ancient dragons would rule with their own version of the Elden Ring and Placidus acts as the Elden Lord. At some point, the god of the ancient dragons leaves them, which I personally believe to mark when Faramazula joins the natural flow of time. Because of this, a meteorite is able to strike the floating mausoleum and leave it perpetually crumbling. The Age of the Dragons ends, and the Age of the Erd Tree eventually comes to take its place. As part of a plan to restore the rule of the dragons, Gransax leads an assault on the capital, but Langdell would retaliate with a war against the dragons. Placidisax and the dragons are defeated, and Fortisax and Lanciax would support the rise of the capital's dragon cult. Now, probably due to the actions of Placidisax, Faramazula remains outside of time once more, but instead of time flowing only for Faramazula, it now seems that time only flows for the lands between, as everyone who travels to Faramazula after the war seems to arrive around a similar point in time. Godwin's infection spreads. Finally, the player's arrival and confrontation of the Dragon Lord brings an end to Placidisax's legacy. This may be a bit convoluted, especially since time manipulation is involved, so I may have gotten at least a few details wrong along the way. If you have any further evidence or insight to this sequence of events, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Other pieces of evidence throughout the game could be tied to Placidisax as well. Stormvale was once ruled by the one known as the Storm Lord long ago and we could maybe draw a connection between that and the Lord of Faramazula due to its theme of storms. On a final note, From Software has been known to often include time travel as a part of downloadable content in their recent games. With an outer god that may be able to control time, is it possible that this power could become important for future content? We could maybe learn more about the lands between before the shattering, as there's so much story that could be worked with for that concept. On that note, that's all I have to say about Dragonlord Placidisax. But as always, it's great to hear your thoughts on the video or its topics. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.